Hey everybody, it's Dr. Drake 63 here today. Just gonna do a really quick video for you today. So look at the simplicity and what I find to be the beauty uh, of the internal workings of this 1873 Winchester replica by Uberti. So what we're looking at today is going to be how does this thing cycle? And you see some things on here which are pretty standard on a lot of lever guns. You see the loading gate on the side. Up top here you have uh, a cover and that covers uh, your action. But I've, uh, I've been shooting this quite a bit in preparation for my first cowboy shooting event here in a couple of weeks. First thing you want to do is back out one screw here. That's it. That's all we're looking at. It's one, one screw. And that is what holds this side plate on. That's it. Just one screw. where you have it. And what you're looking at is it's called a, a toggle mechanism. But uh, I did want to go ahead and just show you some features of this which I, I find quite interesting. First of all what you're looking at here is the back end of the loading gate. Okay. So when, when you load this in it's spring loaded. Well what's the spring? The spring is basically, it's a large one piece kind of affair. And you're basically pushing against it. So you're bending it a little bit each time that you put that in. So I find that quite interesting. Some other features about this gun, you might notice right here, this is your safety device. So in other words, this needs to be depressed in order for the firearm to work. So everything's disengaged until you hit that and then it allows you to, uh, to fire. You can kind of see right here. If you try to fire this, it's not gonna work. If you push it shut, it will allow. So it basically disengages the sear, I believe, is what it does. But what you have right here is a toggle mechanism and what that does. I want you to pay very close attention to the top here. It's the first piece we're going to look at. That top cover is going to actually go all the way back and then stay open with each additional round. So what it does is only on the first shot is it engaged. Once you take that first shot, you can see it opens up. Ejects around and there you go. Or in the case of the first shot, it loads around. But basically, this is your action. It's a toggle action. So what you see is your bolt, which is this piece right here, comes back. And at that point, it allows from your loading tube, which you can't see that part. We'll look at that in a second. It allows the next round to engage. And then this closes it up. And again, here, safety. So this way you can't really fire it unless, unless you've, you've got that all the way in the right position. You fire it in this position, bad things can happen. Okay. So this piece right here is what holds your bolt in place. It's what locks it down. 
as you can see, into your chamber. So if this piece isn't locked down and your round were to go off, it probably can have some bad consequences. Okay. But this is simplicity, guys, right here. And with this type of design, um, one of the reasons why you will see people talk about wanting to avoid hot 357 rounds or uh, Uberti does make a 44 Magnum version of this firearm. Um, uh, a lot of folks' concern is that this toggle mechanism isn't strong enough to withstand that. In other words, you've got all this force coming back this way each time. Now, I have uh, I've shot 357 through this quite a bit successfully, um, but I'm using standard factory loads, and uh, Uberti, as well as any other manufacturer, um, you know, they're going to tell you that that their stuff is fine for ANSI standard loads. You get into hand loads, super hot loads, things of that nature different story but this is simplicity in my book if you look inside you can see um, you have you have that what I'll call bolt that piece of the toggle that advances the round and it locks up right in there and you can see right there that's how that works okay taking another look at this from the top you see I talked about closing closing this cover and what happens with the very first cycle it slides to the back and stays closed and what you see it happens real quick your bolt toggles back and at the very bottom this elevator takes the ejected shell and throws it out so if you can imagine if you do this slow it's just going to kind of fall off of there however if you Put a little bit of speed in it, a little bit of force on your downstroke on the lever here, uh, your round's going to go flying off and uh, might end up landing on top of your hat. A little bit more about how this works. You see these pins. This is a linkage pin. You can't see it. I'm going to pull this out. This piece right here comes out. It's a lot easier to do with two hands. So this piece comes out, and what you actually have on the back of it is just a little channel. And this pin travels back and forth with it with the lever. You can kind of see it there. You've got the same kind of linkage on the other side. Okay. But these pins come out. So these would be the, the parts that you might want to consider uh, when you take it down. Just a little bit of lubrication. Not a lot, not a lot. And then this sits back down just like so. And there you have it. So your lever travels back and forth in this channel and it operates this toggle. Also mentioned, you know, in terms of other parts you want to clean or at least lubricate, here'd be one of them. Not a lot. Just some, just some rim oil. We know what that stuff's like. It's good stuff. But that's about it. Looking at the bottom here. This piece travels up and down, and again, this, this is your ejector. I've heard this referred to as an elevator. If you take a good look at this, you'll see that it does get some residue on there, so that might be an area you want to clean as well. And then, of course, you want to keep your bore and your barrel clean. Timing is everything with a gun like this. Oh, how well you can see it below 
the barrel bore, you see a, a, a protrusion right between those brass lips on the side of the feeding mechanism, but that is your spring-loaded magazine. So this needs to be uh, this needs to be closed, and then uh, the bullets feed right in the side. And we showed you how that loading gate works. So pretty basic, simple stuff. It's good design. Not a lot going on here. Um, I love these old style designs that don't have uh, modern layered up safeties on them. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, that doesn't do much for me. And uh, I could see myself collecting a few more of, of these particular style firearms, but uh, more than anything else, gonna work on shooting them, learn how to shoot them better. I can shoot this for pretty decent accuracy, uh, especially with those uh, 357 loads uh, at distance. Um, get a pretty decent uh, five, six inch group open sights at 100 yards I was able to do last time at the range. Uh, but um, uh, for cowboy shooting, you're a lot closer in, using a lot lighter loads, and the name of the game is how quick can you shoot. So I've got a lot of learning to do, and I'm looking forward to doing it. But I just wanted to give you a quick look inside the 1873 Winchester, uh, in this case the Uberti replica. Obviously they're all designed the same. It's using that same basic design, and uh, the feeding of which is, uh, like I said, it's simple. Um, at the time it was uh, quite innovative and um, lever actions have changed somewhat a lot of side ejecting and things like that uh, viewed as improvements but uh, just in terms of uh, uh, operation and form and function uh, they still work great this is dr drake 63 saying thanks for watching and uh, look forward to talking to you next time